Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about dragon. Dragon in Chinese culture specifically. Because this year is dragon's year in Chinese zodiac, as you might know. Dragon as legendary and mysterious creature appears in the folklore of multiple cultures all over the world. Definition of dragon vary considerably across regions. In Western cultures, it is mostly described as winged, horned, and capable of breathing fire. More importantly, it is mostly evil character. In Chinese culture, however, dragon is usually depicted as wingless, four-legged, secret creatures with the power to take charge of water. It brings fortune and represents righteous character most of the time. Chinese people's definition of dragon is wide. This is a Yu Zhulong excavated from Hongshan culture relics in Inner Mongolia. It looks cute and its ear, mouth, pleated nose can be identified clearly. It would be hardly acceptable if this was origin of Chinese dragon, since it looks way different than Chinese dragon today. There's also Niao Shu Jue Xinglong that has a bird head and long stretched body. It's hard to associate the first and the second dragon together. Then here comes the C-shaped jade dragon from Hongshan culture relics. A simple and smooth contour, full of minimalistic beauty. It has no horn, but long mane and somewhat looks like seahorse. Theoretically, the dragon of this era shouldn't have legs. However, another version of dragon, Bang Ke Long, is discovered at a tomb dating back to around 4000 BC in Puyang, Henan province. Although this dragon has long body, it's got full limbs and meets the criteria of a creature. Interestingly, this is contradictory to the dragon in Hongshan culture relics, which has no limbs. Lu Song Shilong is discovered from the Er Tou culture relics in Yan Shi, Hunan province, which dates back to around 2000 BC. The whole dragon is made of more than 2,000 turbo species combined together with a rectangle head, a sphere and nose end, and a length of 64.5 cm. In ancient book Zuo Zhuan, it is stated that dragon is a aquatic life like water snake. Moreover, it states that people keep dragons like pets. In this context, the so-called dragon is very likely to be crocodile. Crocodile is called Tuo in ancient China. Many funerary goods were ex excavated along the Yellow River that have been made from crocodile skin. Viewing from the back, crocodile swimming motion is agile and nimble, like that of a dragon. Don't think crocodile is bulky for its size. It's actually very fast in short amount of time. The waves produced by its swimming motion is huge. Indeed, it feels like a dragon that takes charge of water. The most prominent of dragon's character in bone script is that it has horn on its head. There is a similar protrusion on crocodile's head, which further supports our assumption. Since 2,500 years ago, tropical animals had retreated to the south of Qinlin Mountains, and crocodiles were increasingly rare in China. Perhaps most people in that age couldn't remember what dragon actually was then. In ancient Chinese literature, Shanghai Jing, a dragon named Zhu Long, opens and closes its eyelid, and that makes day past. Could emperor be a dragon that controls the climate? Regarding the origin of dragon, there is another hypothesis saying that dragon originates from climate. Ancient books says that dragon rides by thunder and lightning, and only its head can be seen but not a tail. And according to these books, we conclude, we can conclude that dragon is inextricably linked with thunder and lightning. The decrease in population of dragon-related animals, the more dragon is associated with emperor and unspeakable phenomena all deify the dragons after Han Dynasty. Many dragon patterns could be seen from tombs of the Han Dynasty. These dragons were believed to be able to transport its owner's soul in the underworld, believe it or not. 
Paintings in which dragons are kept by gods as pets are also discovered. Moving on, dragon's appearance is diverged into two paths. The first kind of dragon can fly, and it needs wings in order to fly. The dragon painting in Ma Wang Dui No. 1 Han Dynasty Tomb is a representative of this kind and is called Ying Long. The other dragon is Zhou Long, which literally translates into walking dragon. It has clear boundaries among its torso, neck, and tail, which are closer to animal in real life. The poses are vigorous and powerful. I rather like this kind of dragon, not limiting to details, showcasing masculinity of Han Dynasty. Look at this dragon-shaped stone ornament from Haihun Ho tomb. I mistakenly saw a tiger in my first glance of it. Dragon's appearance changed yet another time during Nan Bei Chao era. Paintings of dragon became very abstract. Wings of dragon were exaggerated into thin ribbons. Sui and Tang dynasty marks the end of division and countless warfare within Chinese territory. Communication between Tang and countries in Middle Asia became more intimate. Buddhism also rose. At this time, dragons had bigger rounder heads, so were their torso, which looks like big cat rather than reptile, with bushy mane on head and elbow. Dragon of this time tends to look more like lion. After all, Buddhism and lion were all imported from countries other than China. Dragon of Song and Yuan Dynasty were basically the more complex version of Tang Dynasty's dragons, with longer torso and sometimes more toes on the claw. On the base of Song Dynasty dragon, dragon of Yuan Dynasty had flattened head, even longer body and limbs. Fire elements were also introduced to the dragon on this time. This kind of dragon was less religious and more artistic, which makes it more popular among folks. Art theorist Guo Ruoqu of Song Dynasty even proposed a theory on how to draw a dragon. This formula of drawing dragon, although decreased the difficulty of drawing, but limiting, limiting the evolution of dragon's appearance. What animal does Yuan dragon look like? Or can there be an animal other than crocodile be the origin of dragon? Absolutely possible. Dragon certainly isn't just one animal. It might be an order, a family of animals. According to ancient book Zhou any horse big enough becomes dragon. According to another book called Can Shu, silkworm is also dragon. In pre-Qing dynasty period, officer in charge of horse were also in charge of silkworm and silk production. In Ming and Qing dynasties, dragon appearance had its final modification. The association of dragon and emperor was more intimate than ever before. However, politics and class division of this era limited the artistic development of dragon among the folk. Dragon of Tang Dynasty come back one more time during Ming and Qing dynasties, with thick torso and magnificent details. Viewing from front, they are aggressive and powerful. However, if you take a closer look, you'll find that they have problems of lower jaw protrusion. Their noses are also exaggerated with fierce-looking face. This kind of dragon appearance was to please the ruling class of that time. To summarize, in early ages, dragon was a sacred symbol for which people used praying for good fortune and avoiding misfortune. Ever since simple crawling dragon and C-shaped dragon, every dynasty dragon has their own difference and unique characters. The change of dynasties didn't vary dragon culture to warfare because dragon evolved over time. Every time dragon, every time dynasty changed, also means that dragon incorporated more features and become more powerful. However, 
Feudal rulers attempted to make dragging the tool of showing off a symbol of aristocracy. Dragon patterns were gradually monopolized by emperors later on during Ming and Qing dynasties. Fortunately, we live in democratic society today. Anybody can draw, modify, or even design their own dragons. The culture of dragon lives on. That's all for today's video. Thanks, thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, comment below, and sub subscribe to my channel. I make more interesting videos in the future. See you in the next one. Bye.